Hey guys, it's Bailey Wiki, and today's going to be a fun session. So if you don't know, for DC20 uh, version 0 0.9 is coming soon. We're working really hard on it. In fact, Patrick's not here because he's working hard on the 0 0.9 uh, release, which I'm super excited about. I'm sure you guys are. It's going to be the first major release for uh, for DC20. Although you could come and play in the system right now, there'll be a ton of new content that comes with it. Uh, so what I thought we'd do today, just to get you a little bit hyped for that release, is I want to talk about some modules that are available uh, for DC20. Modules that I think you'll probably want to start with. If you haven't used them already, you'll want to start with them. One of them is brand new. In fact, you can't even find it on the Foundry directory. So we'll uh, I'll show you how to get that here today, and I'll link to the manifest in the description here. Let's go ahead and find a battle map for our uh, for our guys here. And I'm gonna show you what you're seeing. There's some cool stuff popping up on the screen here. So let's, I'm gonna show you six modules today. And uh, some of these are built specifically, the reason I wanna show you is they're built specifically to support DC20. Some of them I think you'll just wanna use. So the first one I wanna talk about is Monsters by Sir Nylock. And if you search for it in the module directory by DC20, you'll find Monsters by Sir Nylock. The reason I think you'll want to use this is because it just gives you extra monsters. Even right now, they're available. And if we come in here to our compendiums and we uh, look for Nylock, for example, we can see that we've got um, unique monster abilities. And we've also got some unique monsters. And there's quite a few in here. And they all come with artwork. It does have a dependency on... Uh, Devon Knight's free token, so it'll have you automatically install that when you get it, but you'll get a ton of uh, new tokens, so all these guys are part of that, and you can open them up and um, you get all their stats and stuff like that. So that's the first one I'll mention. The next one is Tactical Grid by Adif. It's a relatively minor one, but it's just it's just nice, especially when you're using a new system. Uh, you can see these green grid lines. Uh, it just shows you when you select a particular player what their range is for their uh, their main attack. And then I'll show you here in a second um, how you can see some of the range attacks. I just wanted you to know what these are before I get into it. But yeah, it supports, ADIF just uh, went ahead and supported the DC20 system, although Tactical Grid works with other systems as well. Okay, the next two big ones are both action HUDs. So when I select my character, the governess, um, I notice here that I've got this HUD that shows up. This is Token Action HUD, and this is a really well-known module in the Foundry world. If you've been playing Foundry, you've probably found a Token Action HUD, or especially if you're playing D&D &D or Pathfinder, all the big ones support it. Well, now it supports DC20. And it's a thanks to a developer named Snagov, which I'll link to, to some of his links in the video description as well. But I was looking to get some HUDs created and it turns out, so I reached out to Snagov because he's done some HUDs for some other systems. I said, hey, would you want to build one for DC20? He's like, matter of, as a matter of fact, I backed the Kickstarter. So we've got a great fan in the community that's already got some skills. So he built a token action HUD. And this is really critical, especially if you're a GM, because what it lets you do is select any player or non-player as long as you have permission to control them, you can get all of their stuff that you would normally do from opening their sheets, but you can get it in this nice compact HUD. Why does that matter? Well, if you've got two sheets open, you've used all of the real estate on your screen, right? And that can be a little cumbersome. So what Token Action HUD does is when you have somebody selected, it dynamically opens up anything on their sheet that you could normally click on. So if I want to do a mic check, for this Nixie. If I wanted to do charisma check, I can do those right from here. And if you don't remember, it used to be that we would have some things accordion out on the character sheet. Well, Patrick redid those specifically so we could support things like these, uh, these action HUDs. It means that you can click on really specialized things like, let me open up this weapon. I have an unarmed strike. And if there was any modifiers that were provided by the DC 20 system, they would all come up in this little, uh, this little, uh, dialog box here. So you can go do skills. I can do an awareness check, you know, roll for awareness. By the way, I'm not, I didn't list this, but this is a dice so nice that I'm using right now. If you want to see your dice roll, you can see it gives you this awareness check. Uh, you can use all of your equipment, which remember you have to accordion some of them out to see the rest. You've got all of your spells, which you've got a couple of fun ones here. 
you open them up, you can see you've got all of the modification options here too. So you can start to modify your spell and then cast it like you would be used to doing from the character sheet. You've also got the ability to, to reset your points. So if you've uh, spent some things and you're now ready to reset points, I think this is automated um, when you're in combat, but uh, just keep in mind you have it here. And then you can assign uh, conditions from here as well. Now, if your players have other things like, like here, for example, we've got maneuvers. If we expand that out. We can see we have all of our maneuver maneuvers here as well. You can unlock this and change things around as much as you like. There are configuration settings for uh, Token Action HUD, which you can go to here. And uh, I recommend going through them, changing the styles, uh, the, the size of the HUD, and all sorts of other things that you might find helpful when you're using it. So that's not the only HUD that we have available. We also have a second one, and this one may be what I would consider a little bit more player friendly. This is Argon. And so when you click on a player, if you don't see this HUD pop up, you can toggle this little Argon combat HUD over here in the corner. And what it is, is this is your whole character sheet, but displayed along the bottom of your screen. You can resize this. I'll show you here in a second, but it's really nice for your players because they get to see, they get to create like loadouts. So maybe I want to fight with my melee weapon, or maybe I want to switch to my ranged weapon. And when I select my ranged weapon, you can see um, tactical grid shows me my range. If we were in a larger map, it would show you uh, you can see the, the edges, the orange range there. That's your long range distance. And uh, you can see all of their attacks. So here's my boomerang on this particular player. I can look at all of their offensive options. Um, this reminds you what you really have also available to do, like shoving and grappling and tackling. You can open up the spell book and you can see all their, skel their spells. You can collapse them. But here's my cantrips, my conjuration, my divination spells. And you can, you know, click on them and it gives you all of the modifications and things you'd like to see. All of your other kinds of activities, including dodging. Uh, you have other activities that are, if they're available to you. Uh, opportunity tax. Uh, here's a, another activity that I've got. It's, uh, you know, life drain. Um, you can apply conditions from here. Uh, you can see extra effects. Um, here's your consumables, and here's the macro uh, bar that I opened up as well. Uh, you can do things like uh, checking your stats here. You can you can do things like um, rolling your you know an awareness check or all of your checks, and you can even open up your character sheet uh, if you'd like to use that instead. So I found it's really nice to be able to use this. Uh, when you're a player, because you kind of want everything at your fingertips. Uh, you can adjust some settings here. If you go into core, that's where most of the settings are. And you can come in here and, for example, scale this down if you want it to be a little bit smaller on your screen. Uh, and all these other things are just super helpful to be able to play with. So here we've got a smaller HUD. So very, very helpful. You may also prefer to use this as the GM. Uh, I just found that players, because they kind of want the, all their stuff open and sort of ready to go, it can be really good for them. So that's two HUDs. This HUD, this Argon HUD, is at the moment of this recording, is only available uh, via manifest URL. So that's where you uh, need to go into the video description here and copy that URL to JSON file. And you actually put that into in the manual install field in your server setup for all of your modules. Oh, the other thing I'll mention about the, the HUDs, there is, uh, we're still working out their work in progress. They're available now. You can play with them. There's just like one buggy thing, for example, where like the HUD will close on you if you do certain things. Uh, that's going to be fixed. We just have a, a change request out to Patrick, who is uh, heads down and busy with the 0 0.9 implementation. So, uh, you know, once he gets to another uh, release cycle, we'll be able to to complete some of those uh, requests, then the HUDs will work 100% how you're used to them working in other systems. Okay, next up, this isn't really built specifically for DC20, but if I just grab everybody here and I say, let's start combat, I'll right-click one of them, add everybody to combat, let's give, our, give ourselves a 15 DC, and let's open up one of our players, whoops, and we'll roll for initiative, which is an attack roll now. We go and our other player is going to roll for initiative and 
And when we begin combat, we can see all of our players lined up here. You'll just see us use this a lot. This is another one from Ripper. Uh, but this is just a, a, a really great way as a GM to kind of see who's next and kind of look at their stats uh, really quickly, make them dead, hide them, that sort of thing. Uh, and then the last one I'll show you is, this is another one from Ripper. This is Spotlight Omni Search. So if I hit Shift Space, I open up this search box. And let's say I had a question about like uh, closed wounds. I can just start typing and what it will do is look into the compendiums and it will find items that match uh, what I'm looking for. And those items could be anything. It could be like, uh, you know, something like an ax, you know, like a great ax. And like, let's say I wanted to give that to my player really quick. So let's open up this player and we will uh, grab one of these axes, this battle ax, drag it over. And we can see I've got a battle axe in my inventory now. But you can do other stuff. Like, let's say I wanted to look up the rules on prone. Okay, well, here I've got a page uh, from the DC-20 RPG compendium about prone. And so I can see what these things mean, and I can really quickly look things up. When you're just learning the system for the first time, especially now as things are changing a lot as well, you may want to be able to jump in, in here and just really quickly look for stuff. And you can do other things too. Like you can look up macros. Uh, like I've got a macro to make players, uh, good players glow blue, right? So let's say this elephant was on my team and I want to use this. I can execute the macro from here. And now I've, uh, I've marked this token as, as, you know, one of my guys, right? One of my allies. So you can do lots and lots of stuff with Spotlight Omni Search. And um, the one thing that I'll mention is when you go to configure its settings, uh, come here to configure compendiums and just make sure that, first of all, your DC-20 compendiums are all ticked off. That way it'll, it'll surface them in the results. And then the other thing I would do is I'd come in here and you can, you can pause this and see how, how mine are set up. You may want to set yours up differently. Um, but you might want to check this on. This is off by default, but a full compendium search that will search deep into the, into the journals because some of the journals for DC 20 are set up in a way that you'd want to do um, searches for like subtopics underneath them. So tick that on and you should be good to go to be able to surface all the rules and everything else at your fingertips. So I know this was a quick one today, guys. I hope you like this. I hope you're as excited as I am for the 0 0.9 to come out. It's going to be great to fulfill that promise uh, for Kickstarters and to really have everybody play with the full system you know, the way that coach has been dreaming of it. And, you know, we're obviously pretty far ahead here in the founder ecosystem, and that's just going to get better and better as we roll into next year. So thanks everybody for all your support for the channel. If you're curious who Bailey Wiki is, I'm Bailey Wiki. Uh, my staff and I, we build artwork, like kind of like the, the map you're seeing here, this one that we were changing early on. And we build anything that uh, from a mapping or artwork perspective that we think that uh, GMs will like, and then we help fuse technology into that. So we use art and technology to help give players better experiences when they're playing TTRPG games in the Foundry ecosystem. If you have any questions, you want to visit our Patreon. If you like any of the artwork that you saw, you can come support us there. And with that, thanks everybody. I hope everybody's getting ready for a great holiday season, and we'll see you next time at the next DC20 episode.